Hello and welcome to Chandu.org. It is World Cup time. I don't know how many of you are following FIFA World Cup or soccer for that matter, but uh, I, I usually do. And uh, and then this World Cup, maybe it's my memory or it's something else, but I find that there have been unusually high number of penalty kicks. It could be the altogether new VAR. Uh, technology that they have implemented so that uh, there is a video assistance referee who is telling the referee uh, this could be a penalty shot so there is so many more penalties going on this World Cup which adds to a lot of drama not only that at the knockout stages uh, teams cannot draw so naturally there would be a penalty shootout should there be a, a draw at the end of the extended time uh, just like what happened today when England was uh, having a game with Colombia, they went to penalty shootouts. And penalty shootouts are so much fun, but at the same time, they also ha add so much of drama and, and uncertainty to the thing. So I was thinking about that, and I was thinking maybe I can make a small game in Excel. This is quite rudimentary, but still uh, fun and uh, somewhat awesome. A soccer penalty game. Uh, the way this works is you... Uh, you set the target where you want to hit the ball uh, using the scroll bar. So you would move it and then say, okay, I want to hit into the, uh, let's say, this corner. Um, so we, we select that. That's where I want to hit. And then when you hit the shoot button, the computer at, at this point, Excel, will randomly pick another point on this grid uh, where the goalkeeper will move. And uh, and if your point and they at that point... Uh, collide at any part of the journey then that means the goal is saved uh, else you score uh, let's let's try this one uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you know we missed so if you miss then uh, that scoring pattern gets updated you can see a red color downward symbol otherwise greens are what you have scored uh, and then in this case the goalkeeper has saved I am promising you this is all randomly generated so I have no control of this. We will try once again. Uh, again we will hit the same spot and then we shoot. Uh, this time the goalkeeper moved to the left and the ball went to the right and we scored. That The score pattern updates. Now whenever uh, we aim for a point when I generate uh, the animation I add some random noise to the point both on x and y direction that is lengthwise and heightwise so that the ball could be anywhere nearby the point that you are aiming so that adds a little bit of uncertainty to where you are going to score and where the goalkeeper would move is randomly determined anyway but because the goalkeeper is bigger than the ball um, I, I look at the bounding rectangle of the goalkeeper uh, to decide if at any point of the goalkeeper the ball hits then that means it's a save elsewise it's a score so that's how it is uh, done uh, go ahead and download this game and have a play I mean it's not uh... so the next part of the video we will understand how this game is constructed at a very high level as I said this is not a very complicated game but I just wanted to come up with something quick and fun uh, for us Excel people uh, to bring and marry both soccer and Excel so now let's take a look at the basic logic as you can maybe guess this is actually an excel chart uh, it's an xy chart with two points um, one is the goalkeeper the other is the soccer ball um, but there are actually four different types of scenarios that can happen uh, when you are setting the ball uh, i i wanted to show where the where we are aiming for so that is another uh, another series called as crosshair, which is um, basically an X mark displayed on the chart uh, with uh, where uh, we are aiming. And then uh, this is the ball series. That's and then that's the goalkeeper series. So that's where the goalkeeper is standing. There is the fourth option, which very rarely happens, which is when the goalkeeper catches the ball. At that point, I wanted to show both goalkeeper and ball in one place. So I made another another series. Uh, that's a goalkeeper with the ball series and uh, so there are four four types of series now I'll, I'll explain the brief logic here uh, what we do is that's the calculation engine um, it's somewhat clumsily set up uh, uh, but again my my idea is to come up with something quick and fun and not bother too much time share polishing it uh, in the back end and the front end looks good so I, I was happy with that 
So we, we because it's an XY chart, we, we need some X and Y points. Uh, these are the ball starting and end positions and that's the goalkeeper starting and end position. The starting position for the ball would be 0, 0. So that's the place where the ball is kept. And the end position would be determined by what you say the end position should be. So we, we set that, but these things are uh, form controls that are linked to two different cells uh, that, that are here. So that's your aim X and Y. Then what I'm doing is I'm doing some transposition on that aim X and Y values to calculate uh, that in our XY space. So two and a half and 5.4. And then I'm adding some random noise. This random noise is a random number between minus eight to plus eight divided by 10. So uh, uh, there is a chance that your aim will be going negatively. So then once this is then the final point is 1.95.1. And that's, that's what it is then this gets copied over here through the VBA code uh, because this rand between formula changes all the time. So what we do is when we shoot at that point, whatever these values are, they are copied over here. And then we know the start point and end point. And uh, then I calculate the distance between the start and end points and, and then calculate the journey of the ball in 100 frames. So at each point in the time, where would the ball be? right so that's that's those calculations it's it's fairly simple arithmetic or with some um, very 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 simple logic if you understand the math behind it but essentially the ball moves in, in time frames 0 to 100 so that's that's 100 time frames and then 101 is the last frame and uh, same goes for goalkeeper goalkeeper starts at 0 and 3.8 that's the position of the goalkeeper he stands right in front of the ball uh, but on, on y-axis he's 3.8 away from the ball um, and then the end position for the goalkeeper will be randomly determined so we pick a random value uh, where the goalkeeper would be and then when the macro starts when we shoot at that point whatever these values are copied over here that's end f uh, so whatever these values are they're copied over there and then from that we we again calculate the distance um, for the goalkeeper that's the distance and then so goalkeeper started at 0, 3.8 and he wants to be at negative 2.7 and 4.4. So throughout the frames, he will move there and then he will end up there. That's the last point. So that that's what happens. And then uh, I'm doing a logical check here at any point, did the goalkeeper stop the ball? So this is a simple uh, check to see if the ball, uh, the center point of the ball is in the bounding rectangle for the goalkeeper or not. If so, that would be a true value, else it's false value. Now, if there is a true value, then uh, we, we calculate where the, whether there is any true values. That means if the ball is stopped, and if so, what is the true position? When, when did it get stopped? If it is not stopped, then we will animate all the way up to 101 frames. If it is stopped, then we will animate up to that intermediate point. For example, uh, in, in this scenario, uh, we are going to 1.85.5. So now if my goalkeeper is is also um, at 1.6 and, uh, and, and, and 5.2, the, then, then I would, the goalkeeper would stop uh, at, at the 76th frame. So that's when the ball would be stopped. So that, that, that's, that's what this is doing. So then the animation will only happen up to 77. It, once the ball is stopped, there is no need for ball to move and then goalkeeper to jump. Um, so th this sequence has been generated. And then I'm using index formula to uh, pick one of the points of this data. The frame is zero. So in the animation macro, we simply change that number from zero through 101 or 102. How many times would it change? It would by default go from zero all the way up to that number, 77 in this case, and, and it will animate. And as, as the animation happens, those X, Y points will change because that's the index formula calculation and the chart is generally created from those X, Y points. So that's what it is. There are some if conditions added here and there to prevent uh, um, calculation from overdoing and, and uh, automatically changing the series to NAs. Let's say the goalkeeper catches the ball. In that case, uh, we, we don't need to show the ball or goalkeeper. We simply want to show another picture that has goalkeeper with the ball. 
so there are three different pictures here uh, that's goalkeeper that ball that goalkeeper with the ball in the, and then that's simply a, a a marker that is available in excel and as the game progresses as you shoot um, we keep track of uh, how many how many shots you have done 28 and then uh, we we update the scores here so at each point if you score that will be one if you did not score that will be minus one and then i take those data points the first 50 of them and then made a a sparkling win loss chart and then a simple term uh, in cell plot uh, with the data bar to show the success rate so that's in a very very simple way what this is now let's take a look at the vba code as well um in in the vba code it's just just one uh, one subroutine and then one for resetting um so in if in the subroutine if if we are setting uh, so if the button says set oops uh, if the button says set that means right now it says set uh, so right now it says set uh, at this point if i click i don't want to actually run the animation i simply want to move the ball back to the center position move the goalkeeper to the center position and give user a choice to aim so when i say set the aim will show up whatever the points are uh, we can adjust them you can say okay i want to aim i showed this game to my kids uh, they, they were very keen to play they played a couple of times and then immediately they moved the ball uh, right where the kids want to be <laughs> uh, at the private parts of the goalkeeper <laughs> so this is what kids do and they want to hit but of course the goalkeeper moves so <laughs> i mean then uh, we score and of course there is also random noise so we, we aimed there but we we didn't hit properly so the ball moves sideways now let's take a look at the VBA code uh, continue so if it is set we set the frame to zero and then change the label to shoot else that means we are shooting uh, then we, we fetch the values we take the random values and assign them to the final values uh, for ball and, and goalkeeper and then we do events that will uh, reset some things and we will calculate the frame length uh, how long this animation should run uh, and then KFE is the keyframe um, if I run this animation at each step then it is really slow it kind of looks very ugly so i set the keyframes to five that means every fifth frame we we just animate and and we animate uh, from one to one to l the length of this uh, stepping at each keyframe and then changing the frame to i do events which will trigger the index formula and then change the chart and then once the whole thing is done we will set it to the frame number 102 which is the final calculation that will simply show where the goalkeeper is where the ball is and, and then do one more set of events and once that all of this is completed we update the scores the scores are simply uh, number of tries will be in incremented by one and then if 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 we scored a goal then it will be one else it's minus one and then finally we reset the button to set so that we can go ahead and, and do the setting when you reset all we do is we change some of the values to zero uh, and, and remove the contents of the previous scores so that's that's what that does uh, again if you download the file you would be able to have a closer look at all this VBA code and understand uh, but the intention is um, just to show you how you could move things in a chart and how to work with it if you're wondering how some of the other things are set up uh, this is the chart behind the chart it's a, it's a transparent chart so behind it is a, a box around a square uh, with with the pattern fill to look like a football net so all I did is I inserted a shape like that press control one in, one on it to format and then go to pattern fill and uh, selected that pattern and simply change it the color so that's my color and, uh, and the background would be like that so that's that's what it is I have adjusted the line width to uh, make it look uh, super thick so that's that's the net uh, I try to observe some of the dimensions of the socket world but uh, not everything because uh, computer screens tend to be wider so there's a bit of skew happening uh, and it, it's somewhat insane to adjust everything I've assumed the goalkeeper is six feet tall uh, so there's a bit of gap on the top and, uh, and then the ball is in relation to the goalkeeper's size so hopefully you find this interesting or amusing or at least fun uh, but do not practice your penalty kicks on this one if you are a real soccer player then go out and play there uh, but use this to amuse yourself 
I hope you found this video interesting and uh, yep yeah, I wish you all the best for whichever team you are cheering for I am I was cheering for Germany but then they played quite lousily this time so now I am rooting for Belgium and um, and Brazil I mean they both show a lot of compassion and they play well uh, I, I especially like the style Belgium is playing hopefully they will go further ahead in the game let's see how it goes thank you so much for watching Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.